with you, MMS. Boy, you can still pick out Dickie Barrett's voice out of anything you listen to. You can't mask it. Can you, you cannot mask it. It's We've, beautiful. I've tried. I yeah. put horns on it. I, I got people dancing all over yeah, it. Yeah, right. Nope. It's the uh, unmistakable sound. Of this is uh, nails on a chalkboard with a Boston accent. This dead language is the song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the new band with Dickie Barrett and some of his pals uh, is called the Defiant. And yes. they are right around the corner tonight doing a show at the House of Blues. Right down, uh, uh, less than a block away right. from there, in the shadows. I walked over, Beautiful, knocked on the right? window, said, Alan, let me in. Yeah, yeah, we used to be out in the sticks, so I love when people come in now because they're usually just down here or whatever. How do you like it here? It's great. It's yeah. fantastic. You like yeah. being down here? I do, yeah, yeah. It's better than going all the way out to the back of an office park. I mean, you know. Right. Um, people walking by. We used to be in the window studio, but the novelty of that kind of wore off. You won't. You won't <laughs> recall this. You. Yeah, you won't recall this. I probably but will. You and I met about twenty-five years ago. You got a familiar face. Um, when I was, I had just moved to Pittsburgh to work for a radio station there, and they used to do a thing journeyman year called You're a journeyman. X, yeah, kind yes. of. Yeah, been around. Uh, we did a thing called X Fest, and it was my first year there. And the Boss Tones were the headliners. Whoa. It was, it was one of those big shed shows, right, in the uh -huh. summer. So it was you guys. It was Offspring. Right. You've got Paul in the band now. Yeah. Pete, and the Defi Peter Pete, I'm sorry, yeah. Very close. Uh, living End. Remember the Living End? Yes, I mean, from Australia. 99. So this was like, it was kind of like smack dab in the middle of all those kinds of bands. Those that were, were the trying days, to, though, right? Boy, I'll tell you what. Radio shows were unbelievable. Though. They were a lot of fun. When you talk about the lineups of the yeah. 90s. Bill, are you old enough to remember this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm a... 42, so I was at the tail end of this. I, I went to You're some of those shows. Still a puppy shows. as far as I'm concerned. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I made it to a few warp Tours before it got uh, right. too or out of... Right. got different, you know. right? Yeah, it got yeah. different. Exactly. Good but way to put it. those warp Tours were huge. Oh, they're incredible. And those, yeah. fe those yeah. radio festival shows, the one you're talking about, I mean, that's an incredible one. Yeah, we had yeah. Liars, Inc., and it was Orgy and Stained, yeah. like bands mm -hmm. that were like, other than you guys, like a lot of those bands now that got huge right. were just kind of blowing up, right? Yes. Um, But... The but I, again I I you and I spoke and and you couldn't have been nicer and and so that's always kind of stuck with me you know when people talk about people that they've met over the course of their career that like Dickie Barrett is just so if he's a mess who's you know? a nice guy that you met uh, I'm in that I'm in that group. yeah absolutely yeah well, over so much, rock and roll people and things like that that makes me prouder than anything I've done <laughs> <laughs> well I, I get invited back to a lot even in yes. the advanced um, age and the advanced <laughs> stage of my career and the yeah. fact that I'm asking lightning to strike me twice with a with a second band here but but in fairness it is sort of a punk rock that era super group um yes. as, you, as you mentioned Pete Parada yeah. plays the drums and he played for 15 years with the Offspring he yeah. did a face, face to face and saves the day <clears throat> and then Greg Camp Smash Mouth like he was an OG Smash Mouth right 90s, him in Harwell he, he wrote the wrote the hits yeah 90s superstar for sure, Greg Camp. And then I got my friend uh, Johnny Rio plays the bass. He's from a Boston street punk band called The Street Dogs. And then Joey LaRocca from Los Angeles. He was in a band called The Briggs. So I, I do have that advantage. And uh, we're out on the road, and this is our fourth show on this tour. These have to be guys that you had crossed paths with for a yes. long time. Yeah. Yes. I put a pin in it and said, hey, maybe someday you might One of these days. work with, we should get together and try something. And it was fairly successful. We're very happy with the record we made. I it's remember, a great record. I was listening to it. Yeah, it's it very it's, good. It's oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, good. The 40-somethings like it. Yeah. <laughs> Us young pups. It's, <laughs> it's pups, testable yeah. with the kids. The kids love it. Yeah. <laughs> but like, go back further than that because it would have been beginning of January of 2022. Okay. Boston Globe, which is one of the newspapers that I would read online, it says, the mighty, mighty boss tones are calling it quits. Right. And so what precipitated that? Was it kind of death by a thousand cuts? Was it Because you had eight or nine guys in that band. It wasn't right. like a quartet looking at each other going, no. time to hang it up, boys. Yeah. That's a lot of people. It wasn't Simon and Garfunkel. Right. That's up. a lot of people to to get in a room and go, 
Are we all on the same page? Um, well, we weren't on the same page. Right. Ideologically, we weren't on the same page. But, I mean, in to greater and lesser degrees, once again, we're talking about nine different guys, and, and I can't, I wouldn't even begin to speak for the rest of them. But w- what happened to me, if you're at all interested, yeah, of course, yeah. Could yes. be a boring story. Yeah, yeah. But um, I was not into um, what was going on with COVID and the COVID shot, and I, and I saw it coming early on, and I knew that there was going to be, a, the reality would be that you couldn't play shows, you couldn't get on a plane, you couldn't go into a restaurant if you didn't get the COVID shot. Okay. That had, at that point, hadn't really even come out yet. Right. And if you know anything about what I've been doing, I was also on a television show in Los Angeles. I was the announcer on Jimmy Kimmel Jimmy Live. Kimmel, for a long time. 20 years. Yeah. And st- he's still my buddy. Yeah. But then there was really nothing he could do, but, but that... Uh, television show in that network is owned by Disney and Disney were were adamant that all Disney employees had to get that shot yeah I I didn't want to I didn't want to signal that way I didn't want to say to Boston's fans hey you know your favorite or now your least favorite ska punk singer is not complying is not part of this is not going to do it I didn't want to I didn't want to publicly really say anything right I didn't. I didn't want to be a hamburger. You didn't even really want him to be a political statement. You just like no. I, I didn't want to be the poster to, child. Yeah. You're like I don't want to do this. The face of yeah. I was. This is you know. Hold off. I, I'm not into it. And then it was the one size fits all. Didn't seem right to me. None of it. The way they were were positioning it or the way they were bringing it to us is like everybody's just got to do it. It didn't seem right. It smelled bad to me. Didn't like it. Sorry for those of you who did or who were into it. Fine, but I was allowing you that choice. So you're saying that because of that, that's what kind of removed a lot of those opportunities. Once, yeah, so yes. so the Boston's were a casualty of COVID, essentially. Yes. Once yeah. I was, once um, the Disney mandate came down and I would now was gone from the television yeah. show. Gina it, Carano, too. Then I came to those other people. She was over on Disney. and she had yeah. a few other things. I was going to say, she had a few other things. She was, le- she was leaning into like some conspiracy <laughs> yeah. stuff. You're just saying, I was a guy who didn't want to do this. No. And I ran afoul of whatever the corporate thing but was. It, yeah, the, the, it was all everybody all in or nothing. And and I so, guess I thought that you had left Kimmel by then, though. I I guess I thought when, that when the well, once that happened, then it was okay. What is you know now? Dickie's becoming the face of this thing. It's it's more public. Okay. And and the band got nervous and thought I was, you know, possibly leaning. Um, I because was it was getting so politicized. So politicized. Yeah. Yes. And I and you know and I was like, look. I don't have to be out on this. I don't have to be, but turned out I did. And I wasn't going to lie. I wasn't going to pretend I did. I was going to get one of a fake card or that kind of thing. Right, right, right. So that happened. So through the discomfort, it was guys were like, you know, we're too old for this. We didn't sign on for this. We don't really know where it's coming from. They just want to go out and play rock and roll. Uh, Yeah, and as did I. Yeah. And I did not want the band to break up. Right. I didn't want us to part ways. And we're still, once again, we're still in the, aftermath and the and the as the dust settles and the and because with all due friends. respect with all due respect to the mighty mighty Please boss show me tones. respect no no not you I'm just with, with due oh, respect you. with due respect to your bandmates <laughs> right you'd be hard pressed to find an average fan who could name the other guys in the mighty mighty boss tones dickie barrett for better or worse was very much the face of that band so for them, they probably didn't even feel like they had the opportunity to go. Well, we'll just get another guy to front this band, right? right? And we're going to go out. I don't. Maybe people would accept that, but it, you're so closely identified with that that that's everybody involved is in a tough spot. It's a tough spot there. Uh, it was. It yeah. wasn't comfortable, and that was kind of the new world order and the state of affairs at that time. Was everybody was in a tough spot? You couldn't really. Yeah. You know, you got it coming, you got it going, and uh, had you been living in in L.A. then? Yeah, because yes. you're doing the Kimmel thing. I had lived right. in L.A., but I had moved to uh, Arizona. Okay, and I moved to Arizona because I had kids, and the lockdowns were pretty stringent in Los Angeles. Yes, and I had kids younger than I probably should have. A lot of people left town. Yes, during that whole They're thing. They're still yeah. leaving. Still town. leaving town for other reasons, but yeah. Are people coming back? Yeah, some are. Yeah, there's a lot of people. They're finding that the people who decamped to Texas, yeah, because it looked like this amazing thing. They're like, oh, there's a whole lot of other reasons that Texas is problematic. So there are people going back to California again. These are people of of means, right? right. I mean, people who yeah. who have the the good fortune to do that can buy and sell a house. Yeah, right. that's right. So so Arizona is still your home. You're still out there. That's where living. I live now. Yeah. yeah, right. 
And you have family still in Boston, or, or you know, you get back there and see people? So much family. Yeah. Yeah, my mother's still there, my father's still there, Yeah, and they're still with us. So the new band is called The Defiant. Dickie Barrett and The Defiant, they're playing a show tonight at the House of Blues with me first in the Gimme Gimmies, and I was uh, I went down a rabbit hole kind of preparing to, to talk to you again of the Boston's on Saturday Night Live. This yes. is when the impression that I get was like right. whatever year that was, that, that, that late 90s that that blew up. And on Saturday Night 1997. Live. 1997. 97. Yes. There you go. Yeah. And you, how far in were you guys by then? I mean, you guys started in like the friggin' oh, 80s, long, yeah. right? I mean. That's a good question. Um, Maybe you were 95. I mean, right. you gotta, you gotta, we were just kids hanging out together, right. you know? Yeah. But I have to think at the beginning because there kind of was that mid-90s wave that you, that you guys were kind of... Um, uh, caught up it, with, with all like those the bands that I mentioned earlier from Pittsburgh, right? Those kinds of lineups. But when you guys first started, there had to be zero bands who sounded like you guys. Well, in Boston at the time, there was lots of bands and lots of great bands. College Town, great scene, yeah. great musicians, and we had lots of venues. And we didn't have you know social media or video games. That's what we did was live music every right. night. We'd go out. So, but you really wanted to. Much like other, unlike other scenes where they had a similar sound, you really kind of want to differentiate yourself from the other bands. So there was the Del Fuegos, the Dogmatics. Yeah. There, was, there was hardcore punk bands, and you know maybe we went overboard with the with the bells and whistles, but we really try to be different. I mean, you did set yourself apart because even within ska punk scene, the Boston's are alone, whereas like. Streetlight Manifesto and Les and Jake, they kind of all blend together more, and I think you guys had a much more unique sound. Perfectly put. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. You're yes. Yeah. But it, Some, that, I that, didn't want you to get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what uh, I know somebody's going to be like, Streetlight that Manifesto, so different than Les and Jake. <laughs> so what drew you? I love you, all those bands. Yeah, what drew you to punk? You know, when I was playing in bands, oh, I was a man. metal guy. I still am, but I have a, I have a great affinity for like punk and hardcore and those kinds of bands. What drew you to that as a young guy? I was a, a lyric writer. I liked yeah. writing poetry from a very early age, and I loved rock and roll. And then I listened to heavy metal singers and the way they sang, and I go, oh, there's no way I could ever do that. Right. And then I listened to punk singers. Hitting the high seas and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> None of that stuff. <laughs> right. And then, but I listened, and, and that's what appealed to me about punk was I can be a part of that. Yeah. And that's something I could do. And, and, it was an early age, and I was trying to figure out, and I loved that it came from no, out of nowhere. All of a sudden, all of these great bands existed. And I'm talking about 77. Yeah. 78. Was it, was it, was the Boston scene competitive? Was there camaraderie? I mean, what was that? That punk aesthetic means different things to different people. No, which is, it was, you know. it was very inclusive, very, you know, brotherhood and sisterhood and all of us, and it was a scene, and, you know, the Bostons did this. Scruffy the Cat did this. Yeah. Um. I, I couldn't even, the outlets did this and and but it was very accepting all we were all accepting of each other a couple of guys from a, a band called the prime movers came and saw me the other night in P pittsburgh prime movers in the neats and just from the and that was my world was and it from there i moved into you know ska music because we were heavily influenced by the second wave of ska the yeah the two-tone movement what was the um, was it just the luck of the draw? It's kind of a stupid question, but I'm I'm kind of laser focused on when you guys were coming up. Was it just the luck of the draw that you guys were able to kind of pull away from the pack? Did you go on the road more? Did you do more we shows? Did out. you just have people coming to see you? We I mean, were willing to take the circus on the road. Yeah, hey, give me some names of like the early Cleveland venues. Uh, you got Peabody's Down Under. You played there. Uh, the Odeon. Odeon, yeah. Uh, I mean, the Gora is still around, but they had the ballroom back in the day, right. too, which is uh, where you mentioned bands like Saves the Day and, uh, yeah. and even Goldfinger. Uh, and then there's Nautica, right. which I, I, I think I saw. That's where they uh, did the Warp Tour in the early days. Right. So, yeah, there's those types Classic of places. Classic venue. Uh, Beachland Ballroom, that's still around. The, the, What's that called? Beachland Ballroom. Okay. Uh, the Grog Shop. Right. Yeah, these are like the smaller, uh, like, I remember rock Peabody's venues. was one of the first places we went to. But, but yeah, early on, we hit the road yeah. and, and stayed out on the road, and, and you know, we were doing yeah, tons Pe and tons Peabody's of is legendary, and it's, it, 
it had two iterations. It was down over in the flats, right? And then they moved it over near the college, over by CSU. And when it was down in the flats, that's when it was. I mean, Chili Peppers played there, right? Uh, Faith No More played there. Like a ton of bands came Boston's. through on their way up. Boston's played there, and it was. We'd go there for the afternoon battle of the bands for the high school kids. Yeah. You know, because I was in high school, and all my friends would all play there. And is I was like, any, oh, it's crazy Is to there be any here. sort of Peabody's Down Under that still exists today? Not at, not at Peabody's. No class. Uh, uh, there are some venues, like, venues, like kind of yeah. punk venues. The, found, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Foundry, no class. Yeah. Uh, the Winchester. It's good like spots. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Defiant. Yes. You guys, it's uh, Dickie Barrett in front. Uh, Greg Camp, who was one of the founding members of Smash Mouth. Pete Parati used to play uh, drums for The Offspring. Your buddy Johnny Rue from Street Dogs. Joey LaRocca from The Briggs. You guys all, at what point do you guys all get together? Were you all of similar minds about the COVID thing? Or did that did that not matter? We all are of sil- similar minds for sure. Yeah. Yes. And and but it, not that it mattered, but right, we were. Right, right. And but at I the mean, time, you you at that point because it got so contentious with some people, and you're like, I, I just want to play music. You yes. probably gravitate toward people that were like, Hey, me too. Let's figure this out and do it. Right. Yeah. It, exactly. Perfectly yeah. put. And and so, but it was, I kind of you know, at, at that time my world had completely you know yes exploded. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm probably never going to make music anymore. And then I started to think, well, why wouldn't I? And that's what I always do. And and it's, you know, good art always comes from those sort of troubled times. Sure. And so I called Greg, cold called him, and he was happy to hear from me, and uh, said, hey, let's try our hand at this. This is something we've spoke about in the past in passing. And write some songs. And and instantly it started to feel good right not it, I, you know which if it didn't we would have never spoke of it and you would have seen the light <laughs> would have seen the light <laughs> of day quietly yeah. backed away from each right. other all right we yeah. tried that yeah. and then and then we started to include other people and we and we just were brazen and said let's go for really really talented people and good you know and all they could do was say no and Pete was all in and and then Johnny was all in and Joey the same way so um, that's really how that worked out. And how has the response been? I mean, I have to imagine people that... hate us. <laughs> <laughs> With a white they hot passion, and, yeah, right. And they're even madder that it's good. <laughs> Damn. It. Well, it is. I mean, but but that has yeah, to that's be. That's what frustrates them. That has to be gratifying, though, for you. They want to say you suck. Now, but why it's do different. they want to say you suck? I'm just kidding. Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's <laughs> the there's kid. there's such a um, there. You know, we contend with this all the time. There is such. A just kind of um, there's a trolling mentality oh that a lot gosh. of people have. So you oh never quite gosh. know. I mean, you know, there's yeah. there's people who will come out and it, just yeah. to give you a hard time or whatever. I come I, from know. a time where you had to be a tough guy to be a tough guy. Yes, yes. Now you don't really have to be to be. Yeah, right. Um, but you, but your audience finds you too. Yeah, and that's a good thing. You know, people who who want to see what you guys are doing. Um, and, I, I, we've got we've. We get nothing but great response. I mean, yeah. everything that we do, unless you go to maybe an Instagram post or something mm-hmm. where people, like I said, get really tough. But for the most part, we get at the venues. At yeah, the I imagine at the shows, shows and stuff. It's, people you, love it. Yeah. From from what I've heard of the band, which I, I, I started listening when I heard you are going to come on, and I was like, oh, this, is, this slides right into a lot of the music I already listened to, but it's still distinct and unique enough because there is a little bit more – Wisdom compared to some of the stuff you. that you would write when you're 20 years old, and you know th- right. things like that. So there, there's a little more. Uh, Don't spill that beer on yeah. my plaid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's it's, but I wrote it's, that it's, it's real times. real catchy. It's it, and you've always had a, a knack for uh, a good hook, and then also just a very distinct voice. That I'm is, so glad I came here. Thank you so, so much. It's just like a it, you're like the the punk rock Tom Waits voice. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good comparison, yeah. boy. Because it's is it hard to um, you know there are some forms of music that I feel or, or 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 artistic tendencies that I think that some people might have a hard time aging into. Punk though is one of those things to me where it's like it doesn't really matter because the aesthetic is the same. Um, so if it's you in stick my heart, with, I don't that's know what I'm saying. Any other no. way to be right? I don't. It's all. It's where I started from. It's where I came from. It's what I first fell in love with. It's what accepted me. Yeah. As a person, so I don't know any other other way. And also having those guys and and in the band, we all sort of agreed we wanted to make the same kind of record, which was those records from. Let's go back to the late 70s again when it all first broke 
and when Elvis Costello was making records or the Pretenders were making records yeah. or, you know, you can talk about the two-tone bands again and all the, the clash, of course, and, and that's how we wanted to approach it, make a record and have songs that work together and, and weren't just individual songs, but sort of a collective that felt like they should live, and, and that's how we came up with it. Uh, you have to go, or you want to hang out for a minute? Can I? Yeah, I got to take a break. But you can, yeah, we'll, we'll come back and talk some more. I'm trying to you avoid load in. <laughs> oh, well, then I'll, I'll keep you here. And, yeah, 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 right. The budget's a little yeah. different on this Yeah, of tour. course. All uh, hands on deck. Okay, let me take a break. We'll, we'll talk to Dickie Barrett a bit more. The uh, Defiant are in town tonight. Uh, the brand-new album is called If We're Really Being Honest, which is a great uh, title, and it's uh, available. And they're playing around the corner tonight at the House of Blues. I'll give you some tickets here if you want to go. Me first in the Gimme Gimme's and the Defiant tonight. What time does it start? Like 7? I have something, a, something like that. We'll, we'll give you that They'll tell we'll come you. back after yeah, the break. There Tease you go. it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll give you a, a pair of tickets here. Let me take callers 10 and 11. We'll do a couple of pair. Uh, and then we'll do some more uh, after we get back here. The Defiant tonight with me first in the Gimme Gimme's at the House of Blues. If you can go, because I don't want tickets going to somebody that cannot go. Uh, Caller 